Wow, Mark, did you get a Yamaha CS15? And the answer is yes, about, well, over 10 years ago. And then your next question is going to be, Mark, why have you not demonstrated this synthesizer? And the fact of the matter is, I haven't demonstrated it because it's one of my favorites of all time. Now, you may again be asking yourself, okay, Mark, uh, you've had it for so long. Uh, It's one of your favorites of all time. Why have you not demonstrated it? I want to do a great job with this synthesizer And also I've been busy for the past five years demonstrating all the new stuff that's been coming out. But this synthesizer is so great. A great job needs to be done with it. And it's been daunting. Now you may now be saying, Mark, that's just a CS15. What what is this? Was it really cool or something? I mean, you've had all kinds of great synthesizers. Why is this one so great? And it annoys me that you're asking me that. That is the problem with this synthesizer. It has a PR problem that I do not understand. Now, the problem largely is, and this offends me too. uh, Oh, oh, yeah. Yes, I heard you say, when are you going to stop talking and start playing the synth? Yeah, I hear you saying that. But listen for a second. This is important. This synthesizer doesn't have a genre affiliation. It doesn't have an artist that brought it into the limelight. And yet... It is one of the most powerful synthesizers of its type. It's one of the best sounding synthesizers of its type. And it has such a fantastic interface. So this is one of the things that just really annoys me. No artist has glommed onto this and an artist should have glommed onto this. And so the general public just doesn't seem to realize that this is better than a lot of the synths that you hold so high. This You can get for much cheaper than a freaking SH-101, but it blows an SH-101 away on so many levels. It's astounding. So yeah, so I want to do a great job with the Yamaha CS-15. You need to realize what a great synthesizer this is. Okay, so those of you who are complaining about me just blathering on, here I go. Are you ready? Okay. Let's talk about the VCOs in the Yamaha CS15 because they're great. Okay, here we go. Here is oscillator one. This is the sawtooth wave and I have it at 64 feet. So this is about as low as you're going to get pitch wise unless you employ the pitch bend. You can get down into the clicks. Yamaha has placed this right at a frequency where uh, it's just above the clicks. And we have very wide frequency range. We're only at eight now. We're headed up to four. So that's already pretty dang high, but we can go all the way up to two feet. And if we use the pitch bender, we can get out of hearing range, out of my hearing range. Some of you are saying, no, I can still hear that. You teenagers. But yeah, it has a huge frequency range for range for an oscillator. And that's awesome. Put it on 32. We also have a very nice triangle wave. Listen to this. Wow. Um, I'm sure there's probably all kinds of frequencies lost through various compressions and all my equipment or whatever. But to me right now, that is a thunderous uh, triangle wave. It has the nice warmth with the little sizzle on top, just like all triangle waves should. And very high range, of course. And we also have a square wave. 
If I remember correctly, I have looked at this on an oscilloscope. I believe this is a very square, square wave. But it's very nice sounding. And of course it has the incredible range that the other waveforms have had. But listen to that. That is a big square wave. So right away, you're gonna hear me talking about this a lot during this uh, demonstration series, but those people who have described this synthesizer as weedy, I don't understand you. Did you hear that triangle wave? Are you listening to the square wave? Nothing weedy about it. And if you're piping up to say, well, it's the filter. Yeah, we'll address that. Anyway, so as we are here with the square wave, let's talk about pulse width. If you'll notice over here with the pulse width, uh, it is set up in a sort of different arrangement. The pulse width is adjustable from 50 to 90. Now, a lot of pulse widths that you will see on various synthesizers, uh, you have a pulse width from zero to 100. Uh, a pulse width of zero sounds like nothing. There's no pulse width, there's no wave. A uh, pulse width of 100% uh, sounds like, well, actually nothing as well because it's all wave and no variations. So you're like, Mark, what are you saying? I don't know what I'm saying. The point of the matter is uh, pulse width is inaudible at 0% and at 100%. Now, here's the thing. Here's one of those things like what's the difference between a sawtooth wave and a ramp wave? And really there isn't a difference kind of audibly to us, but I feel like sometimes I can tell a difference. Like, yeah, that sounds different. But if you offered them to me without any comparison, I'd be like, I don't know. Sounds like a sawtooth wave to me, whether it's a sawtooth or ramp. And it's sort of the same way between 10% duty cycle and 50% duty cycle as compared to 50% duty cycle and 90% duty cycle, whether you have a narrow, um, whether you have a very narrow square wave or a very wide square wave, uh, the timbre seems very similar. And so what Yamaha has done here back in 1979 <laughs> is they have said, listen, let's not mess around here. Let's give them 50 to 90. And it's gonna sound like 10 to 50. So let's just give them uh, the specific width in which they're gonna work and they have prevented us from having a pulse width that is inaudible. So no matter where you turn this, you're gonna get the same pulse. You're gonna, you're gonna be within the audible range, which is not true for some other synthesizers. So we have a nice pulse wave sound. That's great. And you can adjust to your heart's content. Now we also have something very cool over here. It is the pulse width modulation. Uh, you might say, Mark, uh, a lot of synths have pulse width modulation. It's not so cool, but this one's cool. We'll get to why this is cool. Okay, this pulse width is controlled by our LFO, which is over here. The LFO speed is going to control the pulse width. So you can control the pulse width amount. Of course, is a full pulse width modulation amount. I don't know. I just love this pulse width sound. And of course, changing your pulse width changes your pulse width modulation. Right now we're at 50. Here's halfway, 12 o'clock. very nice sounding. Let's go all the way up to 90. Quite a broad sound. Quite a broad pulse width modulation. It's great sounding. I love it. I don't know why I love this so much. I'm sure you can find very similar pulse width modulation elsewhere, but this one just really speaks to me. And we can control the speed with the LFO, of course. But here's one of our first steps into realizing why 
the Yamaha CS15 is so awesome. The LFO goes into the audio range. So you can have audio range pulse width modulation on this 1979 synthesizer. <laughs> Which tells us something here. What can we do with this if we're not interested in pulse width modulation? We can give this synthesizer a more raw, beefy, gritty sound by bringing the pulse width modulation down to a very low level. Okay, there's without. So we can add this sort of distortion, this saturation, uh, right in the oscillator itself by using the pulse width modulation. And that is a very cool feature. 